Hi friends, Tiffany here. Welcome to my quilting life. So in today's video, I am going to walk you through how to take a panel like this. This was just recently gifted to me. Ideas came to me and said, it's time to make something for the holiday season. So I'm going to show you how to take a panel. It could be any size panel that's, you know, a large panel like this. And we're going to turn it into a lap size quilt. Really, it's going to be super easy super beginner friendly and you can do this too. So uh, just a little snippet though. For me it's going to be just a little complicating but I will tell you for you it'll be easier. I just you know have a little bit going on and I'll explain in a second. All right let's get to what I'm going to do here. So here's my panel. Obviously you guys are looking at it upside down. I'm so sorry for that. This panel is a one yard cut of fabric by the width of fabric. So this way it's probably, let's just see, it's probably the size of any normal fabric. We're just going to fold it in half and look. And yeah, it's 22. So it's a 44 by one yard cut of fabric. And we're going to take some of it away because we do have to square this up. And Sometimes panels are a little on the wonky side, and I don't know if you can see it on camera, but this one just right off the bat, the whole bottom down here, well, or the side, I should say, is so crooked. And we're just going to make it work, but I'll show you how to straighten it up a little bit, and we're going to iron it so that way we can have a nice square as we can get it panel. So for now, I'm just going to leave this here so I could show you my choices here. So originally, I had a light green that kind of matched this green right here, and it was a solid. And, and then I also had a red that matched this red, and it was a solid. And then I was like digging through my fabric room, and I found this on the shelf right here. It works perfect because it looks like uh, snow. It's not a snowflake, but it looks like snow. So I'm going to figure this as border one, and I think what I'll do is come right here so that you can see. So I'm thinking border number one right here. And then again, I had a solid red, but then I decided against it. And this was in fabrics that I recently have gotten. This lovely red. And it is sort of a print. And I'm going to hold these up so that you can see the two fabrics. Um, this one is Joanne's fabrics. And this one is, um, this is, Art Deco Collection, something Brother Mill from Marcus Textiles. So these are probably out of print. I mean, I've had them on my shelf for a few years myself, and then this one just came to me. This might be able to be found at Joann's. Then recently, I also acquired in the mail uh, this lovely Christmas print right here. And I mean, seriously, who could go wrong? So. Then I said, well, this is it for sure. So I was thinking border number one, border number two, and border number three. But then I was digging through my fabric room. And I have lots of scraps from lots of stuff. And wouldn't you know, I have these little trucks just like pictured here. And the funny thing is, is this panel is uh joann's okay and you can find it at joann's and i'll probably put a link for it down there i don't uh, it's not a um, affiliate link but i'll get you a link for it just so that you guys know what it is and it'll be in the description below this video but this fabric on the other hand is a totally different person and the only part of the selvage that i have is this scrap right here that says homegrown holidays by deb something it has an ST is all I could see. So I don't have much. It is literally like a six and a half inch strip of fabric with a fabric as well. So it's the selvage to selvage. And then I have this chunk right here, a nice big chunk. But the problem is, is this is a directional fabric. So this is the part I said might be confusing for me 
and not for you. The math is still going to be exactly the same or the cuts are still going to be exactly the same. I'm just working with, well, maybe working with because I don't know if there's enough and we'll find out during this video <laughs> while I'm cutting things up. If there is enough between these pieces of scraps for me to have the direction go this direction for the bottom of the quilt and then up and down like this for the sides and then again this direction for the top. That way everything is right side up with the direction of the panel. So I'm not 100% sure there is going to be enough here. I'm going to figure that out off camera and then you'll know when I have my pieces cut if I'm using this or if I'm using this fabric. So you'll know in just a bit because I got to see if I have enough. So I'm going to cut this up and see if it works the way I think. If I don't have to have so many extra seams and if uh, it doesn't look like it, then this will just go back in my scraps and I will move on to this and then I'll tell you what we're going to do. So first, let me see if I have enough of this. I shall be back with how to press your panel and get that situated. So they're not sewn together, nor is the panel, you know, pressed and cut yet. I just wanted to show you. This is what I'm planning on doing. I had enough. So the top and bottom have it directional and then the sides have it directional. I'm going to tell you right now that first cut for that first border, which is going to go around after we cut the panel, is going to be three and a quarter inches. That's 3.25, three and one quarter inch width. I, of course, had scraps to work with. But I could tell you this top and bottom is two full length strips and the sides are two full length and a half. So you need one, two, three, four, five strips off of your yardage to get that first border of your coordinating fabric. If you have coordinating, you don't have to coordinate it. You can coordinate it yourself. It doesn't actually have to match anything. So I'm just telling you right off the bat, that's what I'm going to do. And this is kind of what it's going to look like. So we're going to get to now showing you how to line up the panel so that you have more of a straighter cut because panels, I don't know how or why they always get wonky. So let's unwonkify this panel right now. Okay, here's the panel. The first thing I want to look at, and you can see right off the bat, this one seems pretty straight, but this one needs to go to the side a little. So what we're going to do is I'm going to take these four corners right here and I am actually going to match them up right on top of themselves, just like this. So that one matches right here. And I'm going to take a really small pin. And I'm going to put it right there. And then I'm going to go over to this side and I'm going to match up this corner. Uh, if you have a dark panel, it's a little bit harder to see, but do the best that you can. Match them up. I'm going to throw a pin in it when I know that that is matched up right on top of there. And it's right there in the corner. And now I'm just going to match the rest of this. So I'm going to match the panel. You might have to finagle things just a little bit. And I'm going to throw some more pins in here to keep it nicely matched up and together. Now, if you don't have a panel that has this kind of border and you can get away with just making it look square, and then I would suggest go ahead and do that. Now you can see, look at this. That's how much off it is. So this is why panels are so hard to do sometimes. So I'm going to try to rematch this again. I'm just going to keep going until I get a good lineup. And again, it doesn't have to be perfect. This is just me trying to be a little bit. Uh, I want it to be rectangle as rectangle as I can get it. The next thing I'm going to do. I am going to straighten it and look you can see right here look at how crooked that was I can't even make this lay flat so we're going to line up these sides now 
best as we can. And if we can't get this perfect, I'll show you what to do then, because I have a feeling that this panel is not going to lay. Look at that. I can't even get it to lay flat right here. I'm really making it wonky doing this. More than it already is, because it is wonky to start with. <laughs> All right, so there's one side. I'm going to do this side. Oh, that side's like right on. Oh, that bottom is not. Give it a little tug, smooth it out, and see. Throw another pin in it. I'm using really tiny pins. All right, I'm going to use my fingernails. I know that sound is not very pleasant. Smooth it. Smooth it. Because when I quilt this, I definitely don't want it to have wrinkled fullness either. So I'm going to think about that. And if I can't get this just with my fingers to flatten out, look at this, it's not even flattening out. So that's matched right here. If I can't get this flat with just my fingers, then we're going to move on to the other route. Okay, that's very cockeyed and crooked. You can also stretch the way you need it to go. It's definitely not stretching out the way I would like. Just give it a little tug the direction you need it to go. And then take a look. Let's get that bottom layer under there wrinkled out. And look, it's a little bit smoother. All right, we're going to tug again with my pins in there. I'm going to come over here and tug right here and tug right here. Once this is quilted and it goes through the wash, a lot of this uh, wrinkliness will disappear. I'm going to relay this back on here. Rematch it back up. I'm going to try not to stab myself. And now it's starting to look a little bit flatter. We're going to see if this matches now. That lines up there. And this lines up here. All right. Doesn't seem very flat under there, but it's definitely lined up. I'm going to turn it over. Look at the other side, and you can see the other side is definitely wonky. All right, smooth it back out. And it's not going to go flat. So we're going to go with way number two. But if you had a really nice panel, it should lay nice and flat. <clears throat> Especially if you press it first and do some of that stretching first when you get it and you know that this is off or crooked, then I would stretch it first, press it, and then look again, make sure it's square, line it back up, and try again. This panel is no hope for straightening this up. So I'm going to go ahead and pull these pins, but there is a method right there for straightening out your panel. But that's not the route we're going to take. <laughs> We're going to go a different route because I'm not going to be able to get that flat with my fingers to take it to the iron. Did I get all those pins? I did. The next thing you can do, if that doesn't work, is come over here and look where it starts to get crooked. And this is about where it's starting to get crooked right here. So I'm going to take right here and down here, or up here and down here, and give it a tug. And then I'm going to iron it. So I'm going to take about right here in the middle, give it a tug, and give it a tug. It should stretch just a little bit. Ooh, look at that. Look how much straighter that is right here. I need to get this bottom right here. Straightened a little bit more, so I'm going to give it a tug about right here and down here. 
And it should stretch just a little bit. All right, I'm gonna lay it right here in front of me and you can see right in front of you, if you're laying this straight right here on your cutting mat and you just take a look at it, that looks pretty straight to me. So what I'm gonna do is call it, I'll give it a little tug right there. I'm gonna take it to the iron now that I've stretched it and I'm going to press it permanently in this position that it is stretched in. I know that seemed kind of confusing and I didn't mean to confuse you, but panels are a little tricky. You can't just fold your fabric in half like this when your fabric is not straight. You can't just fold it in half right here and hope that when you adjust to the side, like I've shown you in my yardage video um, to get straight cuts, you can't just adjust it like that to make it nice and straight. It just doesn't work that way. Look at how off that is. It just doesn't work. So we're gonna go the other route. I've stretched it. It looks pretty flat. Sorry for the camera shake. Looks pretty square. And I'm gonna go with iron now and permanently press it in this position. So I'll be right back. Okay, my panel is now pressed. And I had to stretch it just a little bit because on my ironing board, I was able to see what needed to be fixed on it. So now it's as square as I could possibly get it, but it was too wonky. Uh, I actually took a second, you know, while I was on uh, the break from you guys for that few seconds, I actually took the time to fold it in half again and it still was wonky. So I can't line my panel up. That's okay. We're just gonna go ahead and get started because if you lined it up, it would have worked better. We're just gonna go ahead and cut this in full as if we were trimming our quilt after we quilt it type of cut. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna start right here at this bottom. I'm gonna take my ruler and I'm gonna line it one inch away from my end of my panel. This is a one yard panel. And I totally forgot to tell you guys everything you needed in the beginning. <laughs> so I will put that somewhere in the beginning on writing. <laughs> All right, we're gonna take right now and line this ruler up on my edge where I need to go or wherever you're gonna line up on your panel. And I'm gonna come out one inch beyond that. So I'm just gonna line it up one inch mark here, the one inch is touching there and there. And I am gonna make a cut. I'm gonna adjust it up. Everything's still lined up. I'm gonna cut that away. And that selvage, I tell people all the time, the selvage is a lot thicker. Notice that with a brand new blade, it still didn't cut it right there on that end. All right, I'm gonna pull it down towards me. Just leaving this little piece away. And I'm gonna go ahead now and line this up, line this up, line that up, make my cut. And now I can come off of the end. So I'm gonna line up right here on my one inch and right at that end. And if it doesn't meet up fully because it's a little crooked or wonky, I'm just gonna do my best to be as close to that one inch mark. And then this is just garbage. I'm gonna go ahead and turn it one turn. And now, Here's where the, that crookedness, can you see that? If I was to line this up on a line right here and then try to line a line right here on my ruler, do you see how off that is? It's about a quarter inch here and almost the full inch right there. That's okay. Because remember, we stretched it and we're gonna keep just pulling on it and stretching it until it takes its shape because we're gonna add borders to it. But I'm gonna line this up and this down here is a little off, but I am straight right here on this one inch line and I'm also straight right here on this border right here. So there's a tiny smidge sticking out there. I don't mind that. I'm gonna cut my one inch just like that. I'm gonna slide it down, cutting one inch away, one inch here, one inch lined up there. One inch away from my central design of my panel. 
lining up this end here. I'm also taking a look right here to see if that is straight. It's really not. It's gonna be a hair off just like the other end was. That's okay. I'm gonna go ahead, toss that. Turn it again. Sorry for the shakiness of the camera. I keep hitting the camera thing. I don't mean to, but I don't have the best filming whatever in here. <laughs> All right, I'm going to go ahead and line up my ruler right here. I'm going to put my one inch tip down here and I now have black showing, but this is straight. It's just slightly off. I'm not going to play that stretching game. I just want it one inch away. So there's one inch away. Lining it up. And you can see I'm going to go outwards like that. But again, it's going to be stretched into place. I'm going to try to straighten right here and right here. I'm just slightly going to be off right there at that edge, but I want it to be as straight as I can get it. So we're going to go with right there. And nobody's going to know, except for you guys. <laughs> All right, look, see? No matter what I do, it's off. Look at how off that is. I'm going to put this straight line, and even with it being a slight crooked right there, I'm going to straighten my ruler up on this and come out. I mean, it's not horrible, but it's not so sideways. All right, I'm just going to cut, line up, cut. And last final cut, we're going to make sure that this end right here is square. Ooh, look at that. See how that is off? I'm going to straighten that up. If I pull this over, look how much I got a quarter inch of black showing right there. If I stretch it a little, look at that. It kept it straight, straight, and we're going to just give it a little stretch and straight. And I'm going to cut it while it's in that stretched mode. Obviously, like I said, once it's pressed and the whole quilt is pressed and quilted, I think it will lay just a little bit flatter. It's almost fully square. All right. So this is ready. And we have already cut our first border, which is three and a quarter inch strips. You need five three and a quarter inch strips. That's a half a yard for border number one. One half a yard for your border number one. We're gonna cut five three and a quarter inch strips. I've already cut them. I just need to piece them, but we're gonna go ahead and cut border number twos out first. So here's border number two. Border number two, you need three quarters of a yard. So three quarters of a yard or 27 inches about, which is three quarters of a yard. I'm going to line this up and I'm going to go ahead and start cutting this up as well. And hopefully this is three quarters of a yard because I just realized it's kind of short right there. But we'll see once I cut. So I'm going to go ahead and straighten it out. That you won't see because I'm kind of off the camera a little bit. And we're going to cut six four and a quarter inch strips six four and one quarter inch strips so one two three Four, two more. Five, and here we are with number six. Right here. And then I have a little bit left, which I will pre cut and stick in my strings bin of my width of fabric. Random width pieces in my full width of fabric scraps. All right, so I'm gonna set these aside and we're gonna go move on to border number three's cuts because we still have to piece all this together and we're gonna do that all at once. 
So border number three is a directional print again. So we're gonna be making sure that we have our direction when we're doing this. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to cut off one and three quarter yards. So we're gonna cut off one and three quarter yards. There's one. And honestly, look at that. Three quarters right here. I'm gonna go ahead and chop this up. Okay. I'm gonna set that aside because you never know. Sometimes I'm off with my measurements. <laughs> I'm gonna start by opening this up just like this and folding it in half. You can press your fabric first, which is probably what I'm gonna do real quick because I just noticed that this is kind of on the wrinkly side. So I'm gonna go ahead and take this to the iron real quick and make it flat. All right, I got it as flat as I possibly could. I'm gonna go ahead and fold it onto itself. I also need to tell you that this is also a Joann's fabric. Like I said in the beginning, I will try to find some links to these. They're not affiliate links, so if you purchase it, that's on you. I don't make uh, any commissions from it or anything like that. So I'll just find them just for the kindness of what I am doing here for you guys if you want to make this same exact thing, if I can find these. All right. I have folded it. Now it's four layers, okay? Some people don't cut four layers of fabric. I'm okay with cutting eight layers. <laughs> so I'm gonna go ahead now and fold this on top of itself again. My lineup is the selvage. The selvage is my friend right now. So everything is nice and lined up. I have eight layers. If you are not comfortable with cutting eight layers, then Find, try to do it as best as you can with your cutting mat, but just know that we're cutting along the selvage, so it should be quite simple. I'm going to go ahead now and I'm going to line this up. My fold is on a line on my mat, and then I am lining my ruler up right here, making sure that the whole entire selvage is within that limit and everything matches up. I'm just using whatever number. I'm going to go ahead with my fresh blade. I'm able to cut through all eight of those layers. All right. I'm going to go ahead and turn this around now. I'm going to line it up on a line. Okay. On a line on the mat. And we're going to come over eight and a quarter inches. So eight. I'm lined up on 10. I'm going to come over to the 18 and one quarter inch mark. So eight and one quarter, and I'm just going to make one cut. That's going to give me the two pieces I need for my third border in the side direction. So eight and one quarter. There we go. Eight and one quarter, and now I have two side pieces for my quilt. Just like that, as you can see. Okay, so my two sides are cut and ready. I don't even need to piece these. The rest we will need to. <laughs> All right, now we're gonna open it up because I need the opposite direction. So I'm gonna come over here. All my folds are lined up nice and straight. I'm gonna make this end right here. We're gonna just line it up on a line. We're gonna cut it nice and straight so that I have a nice straight cut to start with. I'm on a line from here to here. My folds are right on top of each other, or at least they were till I moved the fabric ever so slightly. Go line it all back up, put it all on a line. Make sure I'm crossing the line right there. And I'm gonna go ahead and start cutting right here now. So I'm going to make it straight first because it wasn't straight to begin with. And we're going to come over eight and a quarter inches. So I'm just going to move this down so that I can see where my eight and a quarter inch is. 
I'm going to put it back on the line. We're going to come to eight and a quarter right here. And I'm going to make two of these cuts. One. And we're going to line it up on the 10 because I'm just no good at eight and a quarter inch. <laughs> All on my own. That's five, six, seven, eight. And here is a quarter right here. I'm going to make that next cut. So what we should have is two long pieces like, well, they're medium sized pieces like this. And we're going to actually need three. So these are going to get pieced together and we're going to do it one more time because we need a third one for each. And my fabric is not going to meet up with the names matching or the words matching, but I'm actually going to attempt it by just folding that out of the way, sewing it on right there. That way it's not too noticeable. So if you have directional fabric and it's a whatever print, we'll do our best to match it up. But again, it's not going to be perfect. So we're going to make one more cut because I need my third. So I'm going to just line this back up. I'm going to come over six, seven, eight and a quarter. One more eight and a quarter. It was three. I knew I measured for the right amount. <laughs> All right. Sometimes I have brain farts. All right. So there's one and two more for our tops and bottoms. And then you'll have a big chunk like this left over. All right, so I'm just going to go ahead and fold this out of the way. And we're going to take these pieces now. And with all of our cuts that we have made, so not only my border number three, but my border number two and all the pieces for my border number one, I'm going to piece all this together, except for this top and bottom piece right here. Two of them are staying whole. So these two will stay whole for the top and bottom. And then these two sections will get pieced together. So let's go to the machine and start piecing some of our strips together. All right, here we are. Let's sew these together. So I need my long one from my scrap, but technically you're taking your full piece, salvage the salvage, so you're with the fabric and then your half a width of fabric piece and sewing them together because you'll be splitting that. So if you had cut your um, five pieces that are three and a quarter inch, then you would take two, one of full strip and then one half strip. So you would just cut it right here on the fold, just one of your strips and then that half strip will go on the bottom. I am going to attempt to make this look sort of lined up because I'm using scrap for mine. It's gonna end right on the top of that car. That'll be good right there. Sure, why not? I'm guessing on these. Oh, and it would also help if I was stitching with the right <laughs> ay, ay, ay. I was binding and my binding is not, um, I use a three stitch length and my regular sewing I use a two, which would be two millimeters or three millimeters. So that matches up pretty good, I think. So there's one set for me. And then I'm going to try to put this together right about here. Let's put this one on top just so that I can see where it's landing. So you would just be sewing a quarter inch seam allowance. I'm only cutting away the excess that I have. Okay, so I'm going to press this one. 
And that one lined up pretty good too. Look at that. So my sides will be looking good. All right, so those two are my sides. These whole strips are my top and bottom. They don't need to be cut just yet. We're gonna cut them to the size of the panel, which at this time I totally forgot that to measure it because you guys didn't see me do it. <laughs> All right, now we're gonna take our six strips. Two of them are gonna stay whole, okay? So two are whole and then two get hooked together. We're just gonna right sides together. Two of them and then the other two because there'll be two left. We want those for our sides. Like I said, this is a really simple project, honestly. Um, it really is. So I'm gonna grab these two now. Put these right sides together. And I'll cut the selvage off. You can leave it on if you want, but I definitely don't recommend it if you're quilting it because the selvages are tight and they definitely are hard to quilt through. All right, and you can use your scissors or your rotary cutter for trimming away the selvage. I just didn't feel like pre-cutting it like I usually do. I mean, 90% of the time you guys see me pre-cut my selvages off and then sew the strips, but I'm kind of just trying to stay at the machine and not have to go anywhere other than dropping stuff on the floor. All right, so I got my top and bottom and my two sides of border two done. Now for border three for just the top and bottom because our sides are already long pieces. We cut those with the length of our yardage or width of the yardage. I don't know how to say that one properly. We're gonna take three of these and hook them together. So here's one. I'm just gonna do my best to, oh, that's not gonna look too horrible. I really, you know, I don't want like these poinsettias. I kinda wanna x -nay them out. So I'm gonna line this one up upside down. So that way it's not, I don't want it to be funky, too funky. It's gonna be whatever, but I don't want it to be too funky. So I'm going about an inch in. So you can see I kind of lined it up. I'll cut that excess away from the bottom or what was the top? I don't know at this point, <laughs> just cutting it away. I'm gonna open it up and make sure that everything is proper and it is look at that so it doesn't look too horrible the words aren't you know what i mean the words don't match and it's not the exact spot it's supposed to be but it's not it's not it's not horrible <laughs> there's no word for me other than not horrible all right now for this one so i could attempt to match this tree up I mean, this tree, this leaf. Let's see if this can match up right here. Nope, that's not gonna work. Definitely not gonna work. So we're just gonna x -nay that out. We're gonna make sure it's in the correct reading direction. I'm gonna flip it upside down and I'm gonna sew this away from that piece, about right there, okay. So I'm just kind of going a quarter inch away on this one. I'm not losing much. And I definitely measured these to be bigger than what you need. We're actually gonna cut them to size when we know the size of each one, which is what makes this really simple. There's no need to pre-do any math or anything like that. All right, we're gonna open it up and take a look at this one. And again, it doesn't look horrible. You're seeing it upside down, but I'm just showing you it doesn't look horrible. All right, so those three are together. Let's do the next three. So again, I'm just going to find where it doesn't look bad. So I want to get rid of the ends of those, those poinsettias. So we're going to go about right here. It's going to have a little tiny bit at that top point, but. All 
again, it shouldn't be a big no-no. Using my scissors to cut the pieces away, I'm going to open it and go, ooh, yay, it looks good. So you can see it doesn't look horrible. Let's grab another piece. And then this one is almost the exact same this way. So I'm just going to do that same thing. I'm going to flip it upside down on here and cut out that poinsettia. Just going to line these words up. Oh, look at that. Hold on. It actually lines up right here. Oh, no, that's the, that's not Mary. That's the word Noel. Oh, well, it doesn't matter. All right, let's see, about right here. Okay, I have it lined up where I want it. And I did not sew that because I'm out of bobbin, most likely. And then I always check, yep, I'm out of bobbin, to see if, did it run out on that last seam? No, it didn't. Let's put a fresh bobbin in here. It's a good thing I had a couple pre-rolled. Smarty me, right? All right. Closing it would help, right? <laughs> Okay, I'm going to cut away that strip that's over the length it needs to be. And I am cutting this away. If you didn't want to, you wouldn't have to. But I'm cutting it away only because this is a white fabric. So I definitely don't want it to show through. All right. I mean, it looks good. That'll be fine. All right. So now I have my top and bottom pieces. Now it's time to assemble. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my two sides and we're going to come back here and I got to tilt the camera up two seconds. Okay, now we're right here. Here's our sides. We're going to start with our sides. They're going to line up one right here. I want it to stick over because I have a seam in mine and I don't want that seam right down here at the bottom. I don't like that. I don't like when that happens. So I'm hanging mine over. Everything here on this wall is the exact size it needs to be because we didn't measure, but maybe we should. Two seconds. And then I magically have this. See how two seconds can just fix something? Oi, oi, oi. All right, let's see how big this is. We're going to be smart about it because I didn't have pre-math done. It is 41 and 3 quarter inch long. We're going to measure this side and see if it's exactly the same. 41 and 3 quarters. Let's measure that middle because that's what you're supposed to do. 41 and 3 quarters. That like worked out perfect. <laughs> I'm going to move this not so close to the edge so that I can get a more accurate measurement. <laughs> I'm going to smooth it out. <laughs> it's super smooth. No wrinkles in it. <sighs> All right. We're going to take three measurements here. What did I say? 41 and three quarters. Right here in front of your face. 41 and three fourths. I wrote it down, guys. <laughs> Okay, let's see. This direction, it is 34 and 3 quarters. 34 and 3 quarters. 34 and a half. We're going to go with 34 and 3 quarters because that one was off. 34 and 3 fourths. Okay. So, we're going to cut our two side pieces to be 41 and three quarters. Okay. All right. So let's just align it and I'm going to cut it here. But first I need to calculate with my calculator, which you're watching me from. <sighs> it's 
See, I never pre-think things out. That's why my shows are so funny. Ha 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 Okay. <laughs> Let me do some math real quick. Do you want to know one reason why I don't do math? And that is because it didn't come out to a number that I can cut in half. <laughs> so 41 and 3 quarters divided by 2, if I was to fold the fabric, cut it in half and put the fold at the start and then cut it on my mat far away from it, you know, at a half number between the two, would have been 20.87. There is no 20.87 to cut at. What's 0.87? How do you number that? That would be a millimeter probably. That we don't use in quilting. We probably can if you wanted to, like your stitch length and stuff, but we don't with whatever. And then the 34 and three quarters came out to 17.37. I don't know that number. So I'm just going to open my strip. I'm going to cut off the top where I want it to be and the bottom where I want it to be on here. So if I want it to be like, right here. I'm going to line it up. I'm going to take my scissors down here. <laughs> I'm going to fold it. You don't need to see my butt. <laughs> I'm going to fold it right here at that edge. Oh, look at this. Just the way I need it. And then make a crease and cut that. And then I'm going to go to the top. Fold it onto itself. Look at this. I'm getting exact measurements right here just by doing this. Now you guys know why I do this with every border. And since I long arm quilt my own quilts, if it did end up wonky, that's on me. That's my problem when I get to the long arm. But I usually never have wonky borders. I've been doing this method for years. People have asked. So there's another tip with this. People have been asking over the years why I do it this way. Well, guess what? Because it turns out just right every time. I have not had a problem. All right, so I'm just fold that over, cut that off. Now, it's the exact size it needs to be, which is 41 and 3 quarters. <laughs> I'm going to do that again with the other long one. I'm literally having fun with this. This, this is a fun video to make for you guys. <laughs> Can you tell? Did I get my sojo back? Does this count? All right, I'm just going to put it where I want it to be. I'm going to smooth it completely out, the same as my quilt. It is smoothed out with the quilt. Usually I sew it on and then cut it, but in this case, I want it to be a little bit higher. So I'm going to go ahead and fold this on top of itself. I'm going to put my fold exactly at that bottom. I'm going to crease it right there at that bottom. And while it's creased, uh, I will squat down and cut this off nice. And straight. Look at that. Perfection. Just to the top. Again, it's nice and smooth, so I just need to match this up. You could sew it on first like I normally do, and then cut it the size, or you can make it the size it needs to be prior to. Just like that. I have a cat coming to visit. Hopefully, he doesn't knock you guys all silly. And then the same with these. You would do this after you sew those on and you can lay it back up or you can just sew it on, which is what I'm going to do because I'm tired of playing these games. <laughs> so let's do some sewing. So we got to move you back to the machine again. Have I ever told you how much effort I put into these videos? Think about it. Constantly moving things. All right. Two seconds. That was quick, right? <laughs> When I'm in a mood, I'm in a mood. Let's take a sip of water. All this stretching's got me a little thirsty. All right. Pieces, quilt top. I'm gonna go ahead and make sure that this piece stays on this side because remember, that's directional. So this one's gonna go on this side. And just because I'm on camera, I'm gonna put a pin in it. And then I'm going to put another pin in it. I'm lining it up to put that pin in it. And then I'm going to come down here and put another pin in it. Right here at this end. 
just like this. Am I going to sew with the pins in it? No, I just wanted those on that side real quick. <laughs> because I pulled that side down first and I want to sew this side first. I really don't need the pins. All right, here we go. Take piece, place piece on here, right sides together. And with a quarter inch seam allowance that I'm going to give myself right about there. And if you don't trust it, measure it. Yep. Mm -hmm. Nope, I need to come over a little. There it is. There's my quarter right there. Don't trust it. Measure it. Here we go. Foot pedal down. And now without tugging, pulling, moving, adjusting, I'm just going to sew it on with my quarter inch seam. I think I'm having too much fun. Can someone just have too much fun? Well, I can. I'm also like drawing this video out because this quilt would take me 10 minutes. This is the most easiest quilt ever. I just cut my pieces and sew them on. Uh, with you guys here, it seems like it's a little more complicated, but it really isn't. Okay, see, so my ends are perfectly lined up. And if I straighten it, they're perfectly lined up. There's no uh, wrinkling or distorting or shifting. It lined right up at the edge where it's supposed to go. And I started where it's supposed to go. All right, now for that other side. Just going to flip it around. I had pins in it to hold it temporarily. So I'm going to go ahead and remove the first one until I get to the second one and poke myself, you know, because that's how it works. All right. I'm going to start my stitching. I'm just laying it on here. I'm not doing anything to adjust anything. Well, besides pulling that pin before I stab myself. And then after I sew this on, I'm going to go press it. So I'm pretty sure you know how to do that, even if you are a beginner and following along for your first time. This is a really easy project. I'm telling you, you can do it. Anybody can do this. Whether you're a seasoned quilter or brand new. So again, my two ends are matched up perfectly. I'm pulling it out straight and it's like perfect. Just holding it where it needs to land. And voila. And voila. So, I mean, there's no wrinkling or bending or anything. I'm going to go press this. And with magic, I'll be sitting in this chair again. Like I said, magic. I'm all pressed. Okay. Now for my top and bottom. Now I'm going to make sure this is my top. And I'm also going to make sure that my fabric right here is at the top. This should cross over on both ends even after I right now cut away the selvage edge and line up right here. I'm going to do this the way I normally do this. Okay, so my two ends are matched up. I'm going to keep this on the table. And I'm going to sew down this side. I backstitched. I don't normally, unless it's a border. Borders I backstitch. I'm just holding it flat, straightening it out, holding it as if my finger is the pin. This is preventing me from getting wrinkles, folds, tucks, pulls, whatever. Just laying it on here. You can pet it into place. I mean, however you want to make your fabric stay flat, that's what you would do. Okay, so this should come right here. See how it comes to the end and it sticks out just a little bit? You should have had plenty with that. And I have a feeling the top and the bottom of the next one won't. 
because I just come to the realization right now with all of you that it's not just a whole strip. It's a whole strip and a quarter. And I was supposed to cut off the one side a little bit up. So we're going to fix that. All right. I have it fully visually in front of me. I know you can't see right here, but I'm going to fold this on top of itself nice and straight. And I'm going to line my fold up with the edge of that border. Hold it there nice and snug and snip on that fold if my scissors would stay where I put them. All right. Here we go. Sewing to the end. Back stitching. And then when this goes back, it should have my trucks facing up and down like they're supposed to. All right. Let's do that bottom. And then we're going to have to put the two pieces that I meant to put on the top and bottom of the other one. All right, I'm going to make sure that this direction faces the directional that it is. And if you're not using a directional print, don't worry about it. Then you don't have to worry about making sure that anything is matching anything. Okay. I'm going to line. Ooh, those trucks line up like trucks. Tree trunks land perfectly right there. I'm literally going to cut off a quarter inch right here. <laughs> I want it to be like super perfect, right? No? Okay. We're going to line this up. We're going to sew the same as we did on the previous border. So I'm just straightening it out, making sure that I'm not pulling. I don't want to yank this. Don't yank it. Because it'll stretch. And just smooth things out. I use my fingernails to do that, you know. Everybody develops their own thing when they're doing stuff like this. This is just my way. There are lots of quilters that do different things, different ways. Okay, I have it fully on the table in front of me, so I'm just going to fold it onto itself again. I'm going to line it up right at that edge. And then I'm going to cut on the fold, and it's exactly the size it needed to be. All right, let's make sure that the trucks are facing the correct direction, and they are. <laughs> Didn't I make sure already? All right, with the magic again, like I said, it's magic. <laughs> All right, so these full pieces we were supposed to take off. Um, oh, not the full pieces. We're leaving those full. It's the pieces that we attached to make two we are supposed to take off nine inches, one nine inch cut from each piece. So I'm just going to use my ruler because I should have did this earlier. And, you know, I forget things along the way. I think we all do. Uh, it's not my fault. I'm trying to give you guys really good direction. But, you know, with my silliness and all, I just get off and some weird, you know, having fun land, and then I forget to give you a step. So I'm going to cut off nine inches, and I'm going to attach that nine inches to my full length strip right here on this end. So I'm just going to line it up here, and I'm going to sew a quarter inch seam. And now my nine inch piece is on there. I'm going to go ahead and cut away the salvage because I didn't do that in advance. But now I have the length I needed. And then this one, I'm just going to pull to the side because I already cut off of it. And then it's this one that I need nine inches from now. And that will go on this strip. So again, I'm just going to straighten up this edge, get rid of that salvage. We're going to come over nine inches. Now, this is only if your width of your fabric is 44 inches. You know, mine may not have been. I, you never know. 
All right. I'm going to go ahead and sew a quarter inch on this one. I'm going to go away and cut away that salvage. And then finger press this. Now it should be the size I need. So we're going to go ahead now and grab the two long ones. And we're going to put them on the quilt, on the sides, and then we're going to attach our top and bottom. All right, so I'm going to start with my sides, which are the longer pieces that we just cut nine inches off of and sewed on to the other pieces. So I'm going to go ahead, put this on here, and carefully sew it on the same as I do each time. Again, you can measure and get those three numbers and cut that um, size piece, but I'm, I'm not going to bother. At this point, I'm over the measuring. That's why I never do it. It's just a, a step that I just don't want to take. And since I'm trying to find my sojo, I think I found it. Um, I definitely want to have fun and have no rules. So this is those no rules. Okay, getting close. I totally forgot to finger press this one. <laughs> so I'm just going to make sure that it lays nice as I sew on down. Getting close to the end. Once that end is visible on the table, that's when I'm going to fold it onto itself like this. I'm going to make sure that everything is nice and straight and square. I'm going to make a crease, and then I'm going to go ahead and use my scissors to cut it. So that way my ends meet up. And it's an exact size. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and repeat that process on the other side. I'm going to take this strip, toss it out of the way. That is the side, top and bottom. Which one's the side? That's the top and bottom. And this is the side. Yep, okay. All righty. I'm going to sew this one on now. Same procedure. Quarter inch seam. Lining up that top. I always backstitch on borders. I also use my fingers as if they were pins, so I line things up. I always have a finger down here. Sew up to it. Don't sew your finger, though. I've made that mistake. It, it does not at all feel good. <laughs> Keep straightening it out, laying the piece on here. Again, I did not finger press it. That will happen when I go to the iron. It'll get pressed. The seam just naturally goes down towards me. Oh, and to, seam wise, I'm just pressing everything away from the center towards the fabrics. All right, so I visibly can see my border end. I'm just going to fold it on itself nice and straight. Just going to line everything up, make a crease, make a cut. And then continue. And with the magic again. And like that. It's on. Okay. Now. That top and bottom piece should be the right size. Let's hope I didn't mess anything up. Okay. All right. We're going to line it up with that extra nine inches first. Just going to lay it on here. I'm going to smooth it out and come on down, smoothing it out. I could probably lay it on the design wall. But what's the fun in that? And yep, that was what it was. So we 
added just a little bit more. And now we're just going to sew this on. I'm just gonna straighten everything up and do the same thing. Just lining it up and sewing it on. Don't you just love when a plan comes together? Oh, and I like to continuously sew sometimes too, because it goes faster that way. <laughs> All right, it's fully on the table. I'm just gonna fold this little tiny bit over, match everything up, looks good to me. Nice and straight. All right, and then I'm gonna do this other side. It should be exactly the same as the previous. I'm gonna find my end right here and sew this on. fully on the table. I'm just folding it and cutting it to size. I'm not even going to say magic. Oh wait, I did. Two seconds. So I went ahead and put it up here because I want to make sure that I get these next borders right because they are directional, but they're a lot bigger. So I think these are my sides. Aha. There's no seam, so these are my sides. Let's make sure we have these correct by laying them up here. And you can see that it is longer than it needs to be. We're going to go ahead and trim that once we sew it on. Or you can trim it now. At this point, you can take that measurement and get it to the right size. For now, I'm just doing the same way, except I'm making sure that these are in the direction I need them to be. So then here's side number two. And you can see that this quilt grew quite large, quite quick. All right. And then our top and bottom, if I can even reach this, we're going to just lay it over kind of as best as possible. <gasps> Come on, go up there. There we go. Just let it hang. <sighs> Disadvantages of being shorter. <laughs> right. And then the bottom. We're going to make sure. That is correct direction and correct direction. And it should pass. I'm just gonna get this up here. Both sides. Because we're gonna, I left room for this because it's directional. There's about 10 inches or so of play so that I can line up and make sure that it doesn't look too dumb like I did when I pieced those border pieces together because we want it to look sort of nice. We don't want it to be too wonky out there. <laughs> so, well, at least I don't. So we're gonna go ahead and start with side one, which would be this one right here. I'm gonna put it on there and I'm gonna sew it on. Once that is on and I cut my end off like I usually do, it is a, a pretty wide border. So 
but I'm gonna do that same procedure, folding it on top of itself and cutting it to size. Then I'll attach side two, fold it over itself, cut it to size. Then we will line up as best as possible of our top and bottom pieces nicely, but I'm gonna put it in fast forward while I do that. That way I can get these on here pretty quick because they're pretty wide, so let's get to it. And there it is. I mean, look at how enormous it is. It is 63 and a half by 70 and a quarter. That quick. Like, really, it goes fast. Obviously, it took me forever because I'm filming this and I'm stopping and going, stop and go and turn the camera and blah, blah, blah. But in reality, this probably only took 40 minutes. I did say 10 minutes earlier, but that was just because, you know, I'm so speedy. But no, really, if I wasn't doing anything else and I was just doing this, I'd say 40 minutes because 10 minutes to cut the fabric and the rest to just sew the borders on. The borders go in size. So the panel itself, we cut the panel down to 41 and 3 quarters by 34 and 3 quarters very odd number, right? <laughs> but we made it work. The first border is five strips that are three and a quarter inch. Five strips that are three and a quarter inch off of, um, I totally forgot already, of a half a yard of fabric. Then border two is four and a quarter, five or six four and a quarter inch strips. And that's three fourths of a yard. Okay. So a one yard panel by 44, whatever, cut down. And then three and a quarter inch pieces. You need five for your first border. And that was a half a yard. And then your second, your second border is four and a quarter, which you need three quarters of a yard for. And that's six strips. And then that final eight and a quarter inch border you need one and three quarter inch, one and three quarter yards. I almost said inch. I mean, whew, it's, it's, it's going into the night. I got my sojo back and I made a Christmas quilt. So, <laughs> whew. All right. So, one yard panel, half a yard first border, second border is three quarters of a yard, and third and final border is one and three quarter inch yard. And that gives you when put together and you cut these, you know, because it's directional. If yours wasn't directional, you didn't have to worry about the cuts that I made. You would, on your last and final eight and a quarter inch border, you would cut like eight strips, I think. 
a total of eight strips. You need two for the top, two for the bottom, and two for each side. So that's eight strips. Um, and then sew it on like I did, or you could measure the size. I mean, that's all on you. As you can see, it lays very flat. I don't have no puckering, uh, uh, not even in the panel. The panel is laying super flat against this wall. Like, who knew putting it together would shape it up just right with the borders, but it came out perfectly. And this is how you turn one panel and a little bit of yardage into a big, huge, lap-sized, comfortable, cozy quilt. Now the only thing I need to do is quilt it. That way it is cozy to cuddle up to in the winter. So anyways, thank you guys for watching. Hope you totally understood that and I wasn't a little too crazy for you, but then when am I not? So hope you enjoyed and I will see you in my next video. Bye-bye.